Hi, and welcome to Microsoft Build Learn Live. Today, we are super excited to present to you this all new learning content that will cover everything you need to know to uh, develop uh, applications with Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server. In fact, we're even going to go through an exercise where you will build a sample application, deploy it to Azure App Service, and integrate with MySQL Flexible Server on the backend. So first things first, this is a live session. So let's try to keep it as interactive as possible on the chat window. Uh, drop a hi or hello on the chat and probably uh, let me know, uh, you know one line of introduction of yourselves, uh, folks. So while you do that, let me introduce myself. I am Shreya Aital. I am a product manager in the Azure database for MySQL team. And today, I'm joined by Marco Horty. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Build and this live session. I hope you all have had an amazing experience so far today with all the keynotes and, and the core notes that we have had. So I'm a technical product manager for Azure Database for MySQL in Azure Data team. It's really great to be here with Shreya and, and do this session. So welcome, everyone. We also have a great team here uh, from Azure MySQL Engineering, uh, such as Parikh, Jim, Sunitha, Sai, Avnish, uh, Arjanis, who will be answering your questions in the chat. So please use th that chat and also introduce yourself if you haven't done so yet. And we also have people from session support in case you need help at any point during this session. So uh, Shreya, this is a super exciting session. So what's going to happen during this session? You already talked a little bit about that, but uh, can you tell a little yeah. bit more? So we will be covering this Microsoft Learn module. Uh, which is uh, develop applications with Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server. For those who are not familiar with what Microsoft Learn is, uh, it is our online completely free learning platform where you've got thousands of modules just like this, along with hands-on exercise uh, for you to explore all the services that Microsoft offers. Now, the link to this uh, a module is provided in the chat as well as in the description. So you can always uh, use that link to come back to it. But for today, don't worry about you know having to multitask and move across multiple screens. Uh, Marco and I will go through step by step each of these units, and we'll also do the exercise together. Uh, once the session is over, you can always come back to this and learn this. Uh, you know, learn it at your own pace. And the session is going to be recorded, so you can use this as a reference later on uh, while you study. So. For today, uh, the objectives, the learning objectives uh, for today is first understand what is Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server itself, just the basics, and then learn how to connect from your application to this flexible server. Now, the second and the most important set of things that we are going to uh, cover today is understand how to either build new applications or modernize your existing ones on Azure, finding the right hosting option, learning how to deploy your application onto Azure, as well as integrating with other Azure services. And all that you learn in these sections, we will actually reinforce, like I said earlier, by building a sample PHP application. I'd actually like to go ahead and show you what application we are going to be developing today. Uh, so it's the simple PHP application. It's a product catalog application uh, where you can, you know, just view catalog items, perhaps, or you know, add a new product or update a product uh, which is, is already added, added, and you can change the price, etc. So very simple PHP application. We are going to deploy this on Azure App Service and connect it to MySQL Flexible Server. All the data is going to be on the MySQL Flexible Server. And finally, uh, once we do that, we are going to also look at a few best practices that needs to be followed to make sure that your application is as performant and secure as possible. How does that sound, Marco? <clears throat> that sounds amazing. And I'm sure that everybody who is attending this session are super eager to learn about these topics. So uh, should we get started with the, uh, the introduction? Yep. So introduction to Azure Database for MySQL itself first. So. Uh, Azure Database for MySQL is a fully managed MySQL database offering on Azure. What it essentially means is, imagine you're a developer uh, developing with uh, a MySQL server hosted on-premises. Now, not only should you look after all the application code, uh, schema design, uh, optimizing queries, designing queries, essentially, but you're also tasked with the responsibility of looking after the server itself. You know, server management tasks like you know provisioning the server, patching the server, security, 
networking, performance, uh, backup, restore, all of these tasks also fall on you. And that is a huge number of a big responsibility on a developer, a lot of efforts that will go from a developer's side, right? Now, with Azure Database for MySQL, all these server management tasks are going to be taken care of uh, by Azure. And all you need to do is focus on your code, your schema design, uh, your uh, queries, et cetera. Now, that doesn't mean that you lose all control on the server altogether. No, in flexible server, you actually have a lot of customizable controls that are available to go ahead and tune the performance, security, et cetera, as well. And we have a lot of customers using flexible server uh, as we speak. And a few of the popular use cases, the top use cases here are, you know, internet scale, web and mobile applications, e-commerce applications, finance uh, applications, gaming, et cetera. Basically, any application that needs to be highly scalable, reliable, uh, lightweight, and performant, uh, that is where you would use MySQL Flexible Server. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Marco, at this point? No, I think this is really great. And, and like Shriya said, so uh, typically when you are building applications for MySQL and host those applications, so you have a Linux virtual machine that you need to manage. But uh, with Azure Database for MySQL, you don't need to do that. So you have so much more time to actually focus on your application development and, and make better application. You will be able to uh, innovate faster. That's a that's super important thing. And since this is all about apps, right? So you can also use the managed services in Azure, right? Uh, like Azure App Service and whatnot. You're probably going to tell a lot more about those things uh, so that you don't need to manage the platform where you are running these applications. And, and uh, with Azure, you can also use any framework and any language that you will. So um, I think this is a this is a great topic. And um, sometimes, you know, it's easier to understand how to use um, an application or a service when we put it into a sample scenario. So Shriya, what do you think? Should we do a little kind of a role play here? Let's uh, yeah. pretend that I'm a developer lead, a customer, you know, um, developer lead in a food delivery company, for example, who has a web application, which is hosted in on-prem environment uh, using Linux virtual machines. And this is kind of a popular application which uh, allows customers to view restaurant options and, and to order food and, and get them delivered. So, uh, and you would be like the Microsoft um, uh, specialist who will be teaching me a little bit about, you know, Azure and all these different aspects. How does that sound sure. like? That, that sounds like a great idea, Marco. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so let's do it. So, hi, Shriya. Hi, <laughs> how's, Marco. How's it going? Are you <laughs> excited? I'm doing good. Okay, yeah, me too. Good. Yeah, yeah, so I'm Marco, and uh, I'm a dev lead uh, at Contoso Food Delivery Company, and I'm sure you probably had uh, already used our app to order meals, right? Yes, a lot yeah. of times. In fact, just and a couple of hours ago. So, so. <laughs> so has so many other customers as well, and, and our application is so popular, and it's actually growing, and we are going to start a new marketing campaign where we are actually go, hoping to get more customers to use our application, right? Um, and, and I'm the dev lead in the team. So we actually, we develop the application, but we also manage this uh, application. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of things to do. And, and quite honestly, I think that our developers today, they spend way too much time to set up and manage the infrastructure that we have running on Linux operating system. You know, all the VMs and operating systems, MySQL servers and application hosting environments that we have in both development and test and production environment. Uh, you know, it's just take a lot of time to patch, you know, the operating system and the server and, you know, apply all these security fixes that are very frequent uh, these days. We need mm -hmm. to stay compliant and make sure that, you know, we don't have any security threats. So that's a big problem for us, right? And then the other problem is really the performance. We are really worried about like, you know, the scalability of the platform. Think about, you know, weekends and evenings when there is a popular movie on the television or game, a game going on. People tend to order a lot. And now with this marketing campaign, we are probably going to have maybe hopefully thousands mm -hmm. of new customers soon. So we really need to make sure that we can handle the peak times. But um, what we don't want to do really is over provision our servers because you know it's it's kind of expensive, right? Because most of the time these servers would be running in very low uh, CPU consumption and so on. So we want to kind of uh, tackle that problem as well. And mm -hmm. it needs to be highly available as well. So at least for production, we need to have like several servers as well. It kind of makes things even more complicated. 
So um, that's kind of the problem. And I've also been thinking that um, it would be great to have some better tools in, in terms of understanding the performance bottlenecks and, you know, see what's really going on with the queries and, and, and what we should be doing to optimize the queries and the application as well. So, so that's kind of the problem. And, you know, um, I have some friends uh, who work for other tech companies uh, and they have been telling me a lot of great things about Azure. So they actually told me that uh, we should be using Azure database for MySQL uh, in, in Azure and also we should modernize our application. Uh, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. Uh, I don't know which services I should be using and, you know, where to host my apps. So uh, I wonder if you could help me out. Definitely, Marco, and I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, and I particularly like, uh, you know, I'm very impressed by the set of friends that you have who are so well informed yeah, about Azure. They are amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I just have to say that you've come to the right place today. Today in this session, that's exactly what we are going to cover. Uh, we are going to learn how to either build new applications or modernize applications like yours onto Azure uh, and connect it to MySQL Flexible Server at the back end. So all the learning objectives that we covered earlier, we're going to cover uh, those uh, topics. And finally, we're going to do the exercise uh, to reinforce whatever you have learned. So let's directly get started and understand how to connect to MySQL Flexible Server from your application, shall we? So first thing is uh, one thing to note, right? MySQL Flexible Server actually gives you the flexibility to develop with your favorite tools, languages, and frameworks. It could be any of these development tools that you've been uh, currently using, like uh, MySQL Workbench or Visual Studio Code, and any of the languages that you are comfortable in developing with, PHP, Java, Ruby, React, any of these languages, or learning management systems like Moodle, content management systems like WordPress, Drupal, et cetera. And all of these are compatible with MySQL MySQL Flexible Server. So uh, to connect to MySQL Flexible Server, I look at it as three steps, three simple steps uh, that you need to follow. First thing is get the connection information of the MySQL Flexible Server itself. So the server name, the server um, admin username and password, that's the credentials, and the database name, the name of the database that you are going to query. Now. Azure Database for MySQL actually provides encryption for data at rest, right? Uh, but we are also recommending that you make sure that the data in transit is also encrypted uh, and you connect from your application uh, over secure sockets layer, uh, uh, that is SSL. Now, to do that, you need to obtain an SSL certificate. And I think it'll be easier if I just show you uh, how this experience looks on the portal. So this is the uh, overview page for uh, our MySQL flexible server itself. And you can find the server name and the server admin name right here. Pick these up. Uh, you should have, or you should probably remember the uh, password that you created uh, when you provision the server. If you don't, no worries, reset your password and keep that handy. Uh, and then the database name itself. If you're new to Azure and you're, uh, you know, just exploring the service, then I would say uh, uh, create a sample database from this portal or using your favorite tools uh, and keep that handy. Uh, so something like sample DB, uh, you can create and uh, uh, keep that handy to try out our service. The second step was obtaining the SSL certificate. Uh, like I said earlier, this uh, SSL is actually enforced by default for Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server. So all you need to do is download this SSL certificate and uh, save it in a place where it is accessible by the application. Once you have this done, the next step is simple. Just go ahead and connect, basically code your application to connect to MySQL Flexible Server. In this module that uh, I shared earlier, we only covered PHP, Python, and Java. But like I said, it's compatible with any and all of your languages that you are familiar with. So the first thing is to make sure you have MySQL connectors installed and uh, ready. Now, what are MySQL connectors? Uh, they're essentially you know, extensions or classes which give you methods to connect to to MySQL server. And if you are already someone who, if you are a developer who's already using MySQL uh, servers, then these this is not new to you. You would probably use one of these extensions anyway, right? So uh, make sure that these extensions are installed and ready. Then use the corresponding methods to establish a connection using all that information that you connected in the, uh, collected in the first two steps. Then perform your database operations, create, insert, read, update, delete. And then finally, commit to transactions and close the connection. 
Are you with me so far? Oh, um, yes. Uh, sounds so, looks very familiar so far. So I have a question. Do you have a sample application that you can so show? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me uh, show you a sample PHP application. Uh, so in this, I mean, yeah. again, this is I've hard coded all the information right here, the MySQL connection information. But you know, you would have to better handle that in your application. We'll show you how later on. Uh, but uh, a method like this, right? MySQL I real connect uh, will help you connect to MySQL uh, Flex uh, server. All you need to do is pass those parameters, the server uh, connection information, uh, set the SSL uh, as well. And then once the connection is established, you can go ahead and do MySQL I query. Uh, you know, here we're doing a create table, or you can even run select queries uh, uh, and also insert update, etc. Uh, for inserting, updating, or deleting, I would really say, uh, you know, use parameterized, uh, you know, uh, prepared statements uh, because, uh, you know, that really avoids SQL injection kind of attacks uh, that are very common out there. So uh, you will, for any of your connectors, have uh, methods to create prepared statements, bind parameters, execute the statement. And once all of that is done, just close the connection. So, uh, Marco, I think this must be very familiar. Your team would be very familiar with these constructs, and I don't think it'll be very new. There's not going to be a huge difference in experience. Uh, just need to get the right connection information and tweak your code accordingly. Yeah, it's, it definitely seems like you know our team will be able to handle this part. I yeah. think the bigger question here is really like we do have quite a lot of applications. So our application yeah. is uh, kind of a PHP application with some flavors, mm -hmm. uh, legacy flavors. But uh, we've been also thinking about you know modernizing. Uh, that application and maybe having additional services later. So what okay. are kind of the different uh, options for application hosting? Okay, so let me first, uh, you know, talk about the most common type of MySQL applications we see out there. And then for each of these types of application, I'll talk about the Azure services that are available. So uh, web and mobile apps, microservices, event-driven apps, and monolithic uh, legacy applications. So, uh, you know, Web and mobile applications, it could be anything from simple personal blogs all the way to mission critical enterprise applications. Uh, the One of the most suitable services on Azure for um, hosting that is Azure App Service. Now, Azure App Service, we are going to cover a little more in detail today. But all I want to say is this has a lot of options uh, to deploy uh, on uh, your application onto Azure App Service, all the way from you know uh, just zipping your uh, application and deploying it directly on Azure App Service, or uh, you know even using CI/CD uh, pipelines like Azure Pipelines and uh, GitHub and other kind of uh, DevOps mechanisms. All of this is possible with Azure App Service. Uh, the next one is microservices architecture. What microservices architecture essentially is, is imagine you have a, a, a large application that is broken down into individual services. Uh, and each of these services uh, can be deployed, you know, developed, deployed, scaled, managed, monitored, all of this individually and separately. So it, um, now, all of these, uh, actually, each each of these service, individual service or a microservice is essentially uh, on a container, usually. And we have container orchestration systems like Kubernetes that are used to manage uh, the whole application. And on Azure, one of the best options for you is Azure Kubernetes service. And also, we have, I think today, we just announced the GA of uh, container apps as well, which can be used. So. Uh, the third one is event-driven serverless applications, applications which get uh, triggered when an event actually occurs. Does this ring a bell for you, Marco? I think there are a lot of use cases in your application for this. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, it's all about ordering food and, and there are different uh, phases in the process. And, and, you know, we use actually partners who will be um, delivering the food to customers. We are not doing the delivery ourselves. So exactly. we actually need to send alerts, not only to customers, but also to our partners who need to come and pick up the, the meal and then deliver it. And, and also, um, I think there are lots of other uh, scenarios as well, like notifications mm -hmm. to cell phone and so on. Yeah. So 
exactly so uh, in those cases when you just need an application to run when an event occurs you don't want to have uh, an application just sitting there and running constantly waiting for that event to actually happen right so that's where serverless applications come into picture and azure functions and logic apps can really help you uh, cut down your costs as well as compute uh, resources can be saved uh, by only running uh, when that uh, you know event actually gets triggered so that is event driven serverless applications so finally i'm also wanted i wanted to cover monolithic legacy applications now i know that marco your application is a monolithic one i'm not sure if it is a legacy application per se what i mean by legacy here is you know an application that is absolutely hard to modernize because it's so tightly coupled with business in such cases we still have one option for you to lift and shift the entire application on to azure virtual machines so with azure you will still get the uh, benefits of you know scalability security uh, and performance uh, but essentially it's just going to be a lift and shift so does this give you a good understanding marco as to where your application might uh, fit in what is the best service for you absolutely uh, i told you we have a php application so yeah. it probably mostly runs in azure app service i will say uh, we've been discussing a lot about uh, the scalability of the app apps and the mm -hmm. uh, uh, also the, the way we actually develop the the features we have different teams who actually focus on different oh. parts of the application so microservices would make a lot of sense also from the management point of view and also uh, from the scalability point of view so that might be something that we want to do in the future yeah. And like I said, the uh, the event driven uh, serverless sounds amazing because you know you don't need, really need to pay for something that you know you only pay for the uh, the event, right? So that's exactly. that's kind of cool. And uh, we do have some very uh, I will say legacy applications with some old mm -hmm. code that are probably better run in Azure, but um, we probably don't have time to modernize them. We can okay. probably recode them later but maybe run them in Linux VMs in Azure. Perfect. I think that uh, that actually is great that you are able to identify which parts of your application can be modernized with which of these services. Well, you know, so, I'm, I'm, I'm the lead for the team, so I need to <laughs> plan for the roadmap, right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so uh, shall we go ahead and look at a few of these services in detail and learn how to deploy your application? On yeah, the deployment or? would be great to hear like yeah. how you do that. So today in this session, we'll focus on Azure App Service, Azure Kubernetes Service, and also look at how to integrate with few services for CI CD tasks like Azure DevOps and GitHub. Uh, now, Azure App Service, um, you can essentially create an App Service and a MySQL flexible server either individually, or you can use something called Azure Web, uh, Web App Plus Database Service from our marketplace, where actually a web app and a MySQL flexible server is created for you in isolated in a virtual network. Now, once that is created, how does the Azure Web App know uh, which server to connect to, right? That is where application settings comes into picture. I'll just go ahead and showcase uh, how this uh, looks and what you need to do from an application perspective. So in the configuration section in your application, uh, go to application settings. Application settings, settings are essentially those settings that are exposed as environment variables for your application. So in your application, all you need to do is read the environment variables at the runtime, and you should be good to go. So your database name, your host name, password, uh, username, all of this could be set as application settings, and the application can then use it uh, uh, in runtime. Right. The other option is to use connection strings, which in fact uh, Web App Plus database uses, where uh, the entire um, you know the information, the connection information is actually uh, coded into a connection string, and you can directly use this connection string from the application to connect to MySQL flexible server. Right. So uh, that is how you can connect from uh, Azure App Service to MySQL flexible server, but how to exactly deploy uh, an application we will cover in the exercise unit and i'll go through all the steps there uh, again so for now let's move on to azure kubernetes service but before that i want to talk about how kubernetes and mysql in general interact with each other 
any Kubernetes service, and, uh, AKS or otherwise, essentially can connect to a MySQL either on that is hosted on premises or in a VM server uh, somewhere. Now, if we remember, we discussed this earlier, right? Uh, this is a lot of responsibility on the developer to manage a local MySQL server. But the second option is to have MySQL running in a container in a Kubernetes pod just alongside the application. Now, in terms of development, it is very seamless for the developer. Uh, the application and MySQL, everything can be controlled from within the Kubernetes plane. But again, because of the transient nature of the containers, what happens is it's uh, more, uh, you know, uh, chances of failing or a lot of faults that uh, can happen and the reliability of your application could go down with it. So th that takes a lot of efforts on the developer to manage the MySQL server, keep it up and running, right? So the third option is to actually have database on uh, a managed uh, service like Azure Database for MySQL. And today we will dig deeper into this scenario, AKS with MySQL uh, flexible server. So. It's very simple to deploy an application. Uh, just five very intuitive steps. Uh, I, I'd love to see, you know, I think most of you can guess these steps as well. Uh, Marco, do you want to give it a try? Well, um, currently, like if we deploy a new application for MySQL, so I think um, we always want to deploy the database first and actually the exactly. database schema as well for the application. Yeah. So that's probably the first thing. and. Uh, uh, the next thing is we need to prepare the application so that it actually can connect. Is that correct? Exactly. Uh, and especially in terms of microservices architecture, we need to make sure that you cont containerize this application uh, and then push those uh, push that container image onto a registry. Like it could be a public registry like uh, Docker Hub or Azure Container Registry, which is a uh, which is a secure and easily uh, you can integrate with other Azure services uh, if you use Azure Container Registry. And the fourth step, I think, is the most obvious one, create a uh, AKS cluster itself and attach this container registry to it. And finally, deploy the application to the cluster. And uh, the deployment is usually done using a Kubernetes YAML file. Uh, I'll probably just show you what a YAML file, what I mean by YAML file. Uh, so this is where, this is how a typical YAML file would look like, uh, where you will specify the container um, uh, description, uh, the image from where the container needs to, uh, uh, the basically the container registry from where the image needs to be pulled, the environment variables uh, like database host, username, password, all of these variables that the application can use uh, from underneath, and then finally create a service for the application to be accessible either from the internet or uh, elsewhere. So this is how a typical Kubernetes YAML file would look like, and then you can go ahead and deploy this on Azure, test it out, and that's it, as simple as this. Sounds good. So I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. So in the past, we usually like, you know, uh, when we build these applications, so we made pretty infrequent updates, like every two months or so. But, you know, competition is really big right now. And we really want to, like, add new features to the, uh, the application uh, faster. And we also mm -hmm. need to deploy faster. And so we, we are kind of looking to kind of streamline the, you know, the DevOps process. Um, and, and would that work with uh, Azure? And kind of what kind of options do I have in Azure? Actually, uh, we have a couple of options on Azure where not only can you manage application uh, CI/CD tasks, but also make sure that database deployments are automated. So both of these from a single plane using services like Azure Pipelines or GitHub Action. Uh, Azure Pipeline is our uh, you know, CI CD pipeline native platform uh, on Azure. And GitHub Actions essentially runs workflow actions whenever uh, uh, an event is triggered. For example, you make a code change or a schema change. You can actually deploy those changes onto the application or onto your database. So all of this can be done, both of this application as well as my uh, database deployments can be done from single tools. And Azure Service Operator is in fact uh, another curious and one of my favorite uh, new services uh, that is there, uh, which actually helps you provision and manage Azure resources from within Kubernetes itself. What this means is, 
Now, the developer doesn't need to leave the Kubernetes plane to go and create an Azure database for MySQL flexible server even. Like it, typically, you would have used an Azure portal or Azure CLI or uh, all these tools to create a flexible server. But right now, what you can do is from within the Kubernetes plane, create a YAML file, just like the file we saw earlier today, uh, put in the definitions for the flexible server, and just do a kubectl apply on your cluster. And that's about it. You can actually deploy uh, changes as well later on to the MySQL flexible server, all from within the Kubernetes plane. How cool is that? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, um, anything else you want to tell about this? I think uh, the GitHub is definitely interesting because you know yeah. um, we already use GitHub for, for code. Oh, and and uh, if we uh, start using GitHub and, and the GitHub Actions, so that's probably a very easy easy thing to do. Um, yeah. and maybe the Azure pipelines in the future. So I'm definitely going to tell my my uh, team members to look at the documentation. I'm assuming there's lots of MS Learn content for all these different options as well. So you can they can go and, and learn a little bit more about this. But I do have a question. So we talked about the containers and we are definitely planning to containerize mm -hmm. and, and start using microservices. How about the more traditional, like, you know, the, uh, was it app service piece? Yeah. How does that work there? Let's actually go ahead and deploy that sample application that we were talking about earlier today, shall we? So um, let's uh, go to the uh, learn module uh, and you can, uh, so all you have to do is we are going to activate a sandbox right here and we'll start with the first step to create a MySQL flexible server. So uh, actually, let me walk you through all the steps first. Uh, first is to create a MySQL flexible server. Uh, then is to build and prepare your application. Now, when I say prepare your application, it's mostly about ensuring that you're reading the environment variables correctly uh, for uh, you know connecting to MySQL flexible server, coding the right uh, uh, it right to connect to MySQL server. Then uh, you will create and configure an app service app and deploy your application using local Git. And finally, let's test out the application uh, as well. So we uh, in Microsoft Learn, uh, we usually provide uh, something called a sandbox environment. So this is entirely free for you. And all you need to do is go to this uh, unit, unit five, and click on uh, activate sandbox. Again, uh, we don't expect you to do this right now with us. You can always come back to it and do it at your own pace. Right now, you can just uh, watch us walk through the entire service uh, exercise for you. Right. So the first step here will be to create a MySQL flexible server. And for this, let's just use the Azure portal today, uh, just because I want you to see how simplified the experience is to create a MySQL flexible server on portal. After that, we will go back to you know developing application uh, and publishing it. So let's wait for the uh, portal to log in. Uh, and make sure that you have signed in with the right uh, account. Uh, for example, uh, whatever you have used to sign in to the sandbox, that is exactly the account that you need to use to sign uh, to this portal as well. Otherwise, you will not have access to create any resources. So let's go ahead and create a resource, uh, Azure database for MySQL. Um, and let's create a flexible server directly. So uh, the create experience is very simplified. Uh, we'll keep most of it uh, default for today. Uh, the subscription as well as the resource group is already created for you in the sandbox. Uh, just put in the server name, uh, something like uh, My MySQL learn exercise perhaps, and this has to be globally unique across. Uh, choose the location that is perhaps closest to you. Uh, make sure that you choose uh, development or hobby projects when you are trying uh, smaller workloads. Keep the rest of it default and uh, provide an admin user name so, and a password as well. Confirm the password and go to the networking tab. Here we'll use public access uh, to connect to MySQL flexible server. Uh, I, we would always recommend using VNet integration that is private access, but for now, because it's just a simple test application, we will use public access and allow any Azure service to access to this, which means that the Azure app service that we'll be developing in the next section, right, the, uh, the app service that we'll be creating, that can easily connect uh, to this flexible server. And then let's just hit on review plus create, walk through the entire uh, uh, 
details and then click on create. Now this is going to take some time uh, to deploy. So meanwhile, let's go ahead and look at the application and create app service apps as well. So, so step two is to build your application. Now let us clone the application from Azure Samples repository. I'll just show you how the Azure Samples repository looks like. So it's it's a, the same application that we were talking about earlier. That's the application that uh, whose code is here. Uh, in the database section, we have put down the uh, configuration where you will read your database host, username, password, etc., from the environment variables. Then in the SSL uh, section, I've also put down the SSL certificate that you need to use to connect uh, securely uh, to MySQL Flexible Server. And perhaps let's look at one of the insert code. This is very similar to what I showed you earlier uh, when you're connecting with PHP, uh, using a real connect to connect to, uh, to the MySQL Server, uh, using a prepared statement to insert the values that you pick up from the form, and so on. So let's go ahead and clone this. Uh, on to your uh, uh, local uh, CLI exp experience. So let's go into that folder that you have cloned and make sure that you the default branch is main. Once you do that, the next step is to actually go ahead and create uh, Azure App Service web app. Now, before you create a web app, it is essential that you create an app service plan. Now, that plan is what defines the compute resources that the app service is going app is going to use, uh, and it's also going to uh, host essentially, you know, logically host the application uh, itself. So, let's go ahead and create uh, the app plan in this resource group. And we are going to create a one um, app plan with free tier. It's uh, not the most recommended one when you're actually doing production workloads. But since this is test, we're just going to try out with a free tier app uh, service. Now, once that app plan is created, the next step is to create a deployment user uh, to actually, uh, you know, these are the credentials that you will use to uh, use local Git and push your application from this local Git the get that uh, the repository that you have just cloned onto the azure app service that you will be creating so uh, let's create a user um, maybe we'll call it as uh, my app learn user and provide the password as well once that deployment user is created the next step is to create a web app itself now all you need to provide is the app uh, plan name and the name of the app uh, this again has to be globally unique. And then make sure that you mention that the deployment method is local Git. We are going to use the uh, PHP 8.0 runtime here. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, uh, if you're using a different uh, application, a different language to code, you just need to make sure that the runtime is set correctly. So let's go ahead and create the app service app. Uh, we'll call it app learn exercise. I'm just trying to keep it uh, similar uh, to all our other resources, MySQL learn exercise, app learn exercise, and so on. So uh, this will take, again, a couple of minutes to execute. Let's just quickly check this is still executing. So once this executes, one important thing that you need to pick up is the deployment local Git URL. So uh, this is the typical, uh, you know, the uh, uh, syntax that is the format that it is going to use. But as soon as you create this, you will also be provided that deployment uh, Git URL will also be provided here. So make sure that you copy it and save it somewhere. We are going to be using that later on to deploy the application. So just scroll up. And yeah, here it, you can see that this information is the URL of the local Git. So uh, save that somewhere uh, and make sure that you don't miss out on it. So the next step, like I was saying, is uh, remember we were talking about app settings, right? Make sure that the Azure App Service actually knows which uh, server to connect to. So that is the next step where we will put down all the app settings uh, and, uh, and attach it to the MySQL Web App. Now here you will see that we also need a database uh, to connect to. So we haven't created that yet in the MySQL server. So we'll wait for a couple of minutes uh, to make sure that this MySQL flexible server is uh, ready. And once it's ready, we will create a database over here.
while we are waiting, so I, I yeah. must ma make a comment here. Uh, MS Learn seems to be a very great platform, and you know, I didn't have to provision anything in my own environment. You got it for free, and seems like I will be able to use uh, shell environments, you know, using a browser, and it's all yeah. built for me. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's the Azure Cloud Shell, the portal, all of these experiences are provided for you. So it's as if you are provisioning it on your own uh, uh, subscription, really. So uh, just to, I think uh, we'll just probably look at the next couple of steps uh, and see what else we need to uh, make sure that is up, uh, up, uh, you know, done. In the step four, we're actually going to be deploying the application itself. Uh, to deploy the application, one thing that you need to do is make sure that the deployment branch is also updated in the app settings so that the app service app also knows uh, uh, that information. And then, we are actually going to add that local Git URL that you just picked up a couple of minutes ago, add that as a remote, and then that's it. You will have to just do a Git push and your application will be live. So I'm really super excited to show this to you, but maybe a couple of more minutes to make sure that the deployment is ready. That's amazing. Yeah. So I, I think, Marco, your team would absolutely love this. You should uh, share this with your team and have them go through this, get a firsthand experience uh, on how uh, application development is going to look like. With yeah, and you know, we use MySQL Workbench. Uh, and you know, um, we actually started using Visual Studio Code as well. So I guess, you know, we can use those you know, seamlessly with Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server without any problems. Yes, exactly. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I think uh, if you have already quite uh, familiar with it, it's it's a seamless experience to migrate to that uh, to MySQL Flexible Server as well. Great. Yeah. So uh, let me just go ahead and add this anyway uh, while we wait because I don't want to. Uh, you know, we are short on time and we're not going to have uh, much time to uh, you know look at the final results. So I'm just going to assume that I'm going to create a sample DB in the next step uh, and add this uh, uh, right away. And I'm also going to add the uh, deployment branch details onto Azure Web App and also keep the Git remote uh, uh, added as well. So. I had copied the remote earlier. I'm just going to paste that here. The remote has been added. Now we're really on the last step. So let's hope that this uh, deployment gets published. Uh, if not, let's go ahead and look at the next section and come back when it is ready. How does that sound, Marco? Yeah, let's do that. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, actually, uh, once you deploy it, once you do a Git push, it's very simple. Just the app name dot Azure websites dot net, and you should be able to see the final result. So uh, let's, like, uh, like Marco said, uh, let's go ahead for the next section. So essentially, this is what we did. We created a flexible server. We uh, prepared our application and then uh, configured a app service web app deployed our application, and then we're going to test it just in a couple of minutes. So the next section that I wanted to cover is how to apply, uh, you know, what are the best practices that you can apply for application development with MySQL Flexible Server? And this section, again, I'm going to keep it very interactive. Let's try to keep it as interactive as possible. Uh, I'm going to have you all guess what are the few best practices that you think we should be following. Uh, and Marco, I know you have a lot of experience with developing applications with MySQL so far. So I think you'll be able to get some of these. Yeah, so definitely, like you know, the um, the latency uh, between networks, and you know, the latency of the network and mm -hmm. uh, the latency between the application and the database. So that's that's a big issue. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that you know the uh, uh, the application and the database are uh, close to e each other. So I guess in Azure, this means that we should kind of co-locate the resources, uh, maybe in the same availability zone or Azure region. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking. And then um, security is very important for, I told you earlier that we really need to stay compliant. So I really like the fact that, you know, there is the, you mentioned the private network um, and, you know, SSL, that's definitely something that we probably want to implement. And one of the things that we have been really uh, struggling sometimes with is uh, like um, certain transient errors, like uh, the application, 
just doesn't seem to be able to connect to the database. So we already implemented some sort of a retry logic in our application. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more, if you will. So um, the sizing, I told you before, like, you know, our problem yeah. today is like, you know, it's really hard to make the decision about what size of VM we have. And it seems like in Azure database for MySQL flexible server, you have different options. Like did you say tiers and compute sizes and whatnot. So probably um, some something along those lines. Yeah, perfect. I think you've got around four of them, right? I'm actually oh, just going oh. to cover six of the best practices today. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, four out of six, that's a great score, Marco. Uh, and uh, has any of anybody from the audience uh, shared anything? Uh, but either way, let's go ahead and uh, look at all the options. First thing uh, is to co-locate resources, like you mentioned. Have your app as well as your uh, MySQL flexible server in the same region. We actually did this in the exercise just now. We created both the application as well as the MySQL flexible server in central US region. So that really cuts down a lot of uh, latency between the application and the MySQL server. The second one is actually implementing connection pooling. Uh, in, for any MySQL server, there is a limit as to how many maximum connections uh, one server can allow at a time. Now, we really don't want to hit that bottleneck because that's going to severely uh, impact performance because the requests that are coming in later on are not going to be able to uh, be served, right? So uh, what we should do is implement connection pooling using uh, poolers like Proxy SQL, which will reuse existing connections uh, and you know uh, close idle connections and stuff like that. So these two are uh, you know definitely uh, you know things that you should keep top and top of mind while uh, developing an application with mysql flexible server now the other things that you already mentioned marco first is choosing the right uh, application uh, you know container size basically sizing the application correctly uh, you can do testing uh, load testing etc before you choose the right application size itself and even after deploying uh, onto azure there's always uh, tools like azure monitor uh, azure advisor these tools will help you monitor how your application is doing how uh, you know your cpu memory uh, metrics etc and then you can accordingly uh, tweak your application uh, uh, sizing. So that is the third one. Then, like you mentioned, security, network isolation using VNets, SSL connectivity, retrying on transient faults, especially on a cloud. So, uh, on cloud, transient faults like networking blips are very common. So implement a retry logic uh, to make sure that your application doesn't just fail for one small networking blip, blip right? And then, yeah, like you said, choosing the right compute size for the database as well. In Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server, we actually have uh, three tiers uh, that we provide. A burstable tier, uh, which I think you must have caught a glimpse of when we were creating the server. A uh, burstable tier is more suitable for uh, you know, developing uh, small development projects. A general purpose tier, which is uh, perfectly suitable for uh, you know production database which requires a good balance of uh, you know compute memory uh, throughout and then finally the uh, business critical tier which in fact we just announced today uh, which is for uh, perfectly suitable for high performing uh, applications mission critical applications uh, which absolutely cannot have any uh, latency and has to be uh, extremely performant so these are the three tiers that you can choose from. Again, do the uh, load testing, do your monitoring, and make sure that you have the right uh, tier chosen for your uh, database. So now this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are more best practices uh, that you can refer to uh, our MySQL docs uh, and go through uh, as well at your own uh, pace. That's so, uh, that's great. Uh, we definitely don't want to do our own mistakes. You know, usually yeah. the best practices are based on, you know, some mistakes that people make in the past, and then lessons learned, and you know that sort of thing. So that's really yeah. great to have all these best practices. Yeah, and exactly. uh, and I think uh, like uh, like you said, uh, all the monitoring tools that you have in Azure, they probably help with sizing and, and making changes to the sizing as well later on. Exactly. Exactly. So. Uh, like you said, just go through these best practices before in hand instead of you know failing and learning from there as well, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, I think for today we are uh, you know almost uh, running out of time, so we may not be able to perhaps uh, cover the knowledge check. Let's quickly go and uh, check if the exercise is completed. 
uh, you know, if this flexible server has been deployed. Well, not yet. I think there is some challenge here, but essentially how the uh, I had created this, deployed this application in advance. So, uh, you know, it, it, it'll essentially, uh, you know, put the database, uh, you know, whatever uh, product is updated. For example, you can create a new product like, uh, name a product that you would probably want to buy, uh, Marco, maybe a mobile phone uh, for, say, a cheap mobile phone for $100. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can view the catalog, see if it's updated, update the product, etc. And all of this data is actually connecting to MySQL flexible server in the backend. So uh, that is about it for the exercise. I would really urge you to try this out in your own time. Uh, just for the time uh, limit, uh, you know, we are going to have to cut this short, but I'd really urge you to try this out uh, whenever you have some time. And uh, I, so, by the way, I just noticed that, you know, in addition to this MS Learn module, so there seems to be an introduction to, inter, uh, to flexible server as well. And then there was another module that was about how to connect and query. So uh, yeah. I'm going to tell my team to try all these modules that you have there in MS Learn. Yeah, and I think one of the best places that you can check out on uh, check out is aka.ms MySQL Dev, uh, which is a new resource, uh, a set of resources that have been uh, deployed just today for uh, covering developer uh, journey. Marco, do you want to go through this probably? Uh, just quickly, yeah, and, and now I'm back to Marco at Microsoft. So we do have now a new MySQL developer resource page uh, in uh, Azure.com where you can, uh, first of all, find a downloadable learning journey that uh, gives you a curated experience, four weeks of learning about Azure, different services, concepts, and, and use cases, as well as, you know, uh, these app services, Azure Kubernetes services, and uh, different monitoring tools that we have. And obviously, the hero here is uh, Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server. And it's not just about uh, MS Learn. It's also about videos. We have created tons of videos. I recorded uh, quite a few, and the engineering team has created an amazing amount of uh, technical videos, deep dives, and tutorial uh, demos that uh, are all surfaced here. And we also have some sample code and uh, tutorials where you can actually try out things yourself. And that's not all. We also have a new developer guide that you can also find uh, from this uh, learning journey. So it's not uh, directly linked on this page, but you, once you download the learning journey, you will be finding uh, the developer guide. It's uh, Lots of uh, interesting level 300, level 400 content about, you know, how to really build applications and what the best practices in application development uh, is or are when you're uh, building and deploying applications uh, with PHP, Java or Python uh, in Azure using Azure Database for Flexible Server in the back end. So, so please go there and, and, and uh, give us feedback, obviously. Did you have other resources there as well in the slide? Yeah, I actually wanted to say, you know, once you try out your sandbox, uh, you know, uh, exercise, I'd love for you to get started and uh, try out Flexible Server uh, with your own subscription. In fact, we have Flexible Server uh, provided for free for 12 months. Uh, with some monthly limits, basically 750 hours of compute every month uh, is what you can avail, uh, and you can try it out. Uh, there's a tutorial, a detailed tutorial uh, that you can use uh, and get started right away. And then finally, if you have any questions or if you are confused about any of these, uh, you know, processes, etc., we have our solid documentation that you can refer to, uh, and then you can also write to us uh, through our email ID that's uh, provided in the chat. So that's, uh, that's exactly great, and I, yeah, that's talk. great, Shreya. And I just took a look at the chat. Uh, it seems like there are no questions coming from online, so we probably did a great job. But uh, should we just recap briefly before we end, like what we actually learned today? Yes, that would be great. Uh, so what did you learn, Marco? <laughs> and, uh, what are you going to take back to your team today? <laughs> OK, so I'm now back the developer lead. So yes. uh, definitely, we learned uh, how easy it is actually to connect and query Azure Database for MySQL. It's not really different from you know how you would do it in a list Linux VM. Certain things that you need to know, and then you're good to go. Uh, the biggest valuable, like the most valuable thing, uh, I think, for for me and this audience is really to understand when to use what. Like there are different hosting services for applications, app service, Azure Kubernetes service, the uh, the serverless platform with uh, Azure Functions and Logic Apps, and then also the legacy option. Just run a Linux VM in Azure 
and you're good to go. So uh, it's good to understand this, and, and this definitely gave a lot of clarity in, in this. And then, um, you know, the world is really about microservices today. So I think, you know, most of the people in the audience are trying to understand how microservices would be able to kind of help with their software uh, development pro projects and, you know, with the scalability and kind of the management piece of individual functions and features of the application. So really the AKS piece um, was, uh, was very interesting and also to learn how to deploy, you know, to these, these services. And then like, it's always about, you know, doing exercises and seeing demos. So I think uh, the demo that you showed uh, with the sample application, also the uh, the content that we have in the uh, in the MS Learn module. So that's uh, super useful. And the last thing, I think really the best practices for application development, that is, that is uh, super helpful because uh, developers always spend so much time trying out things and, you know, if they, know these best practices so they don't they can deploy faster and and yep. be successful faster so that's always great but i think that was great uh can you show the uh, the, the the links again so that we can uh just yep. uh, people can keep people can take a look at that so yep. the uh the practitioner page developer journey and resources aka.ms slash mysql dev and then if you don't already have an Azure subscription, so go to this link uh, and, and get the free Azure free account and then do take a look at the documentation. I think and we are I, ready to. Yeah, we are ready I'd to, actually quite, um, you know, urge all of you to go back, uh, use this link to go back to the module, learn at your own pace, use this recording as a reference while you study. Uh, and I'm really excited, uh, like Marco said, uh, to uh, see you all, uh, you know, on board to my Azure database for MySQL soon. That's great. Thank you, everybody, for watching this uh, MS Learn Live session. I hope that you learned a lot and enjoyed our conversation and the little role play that Sri and I had in this uh, dev dev developer lead uh, Microsoft solution architect or whatever you are in that role <laughs> where and uh, you found this uh, very engaging. And uh, we hope that um, you have an exciting build. There are still quite a lot of content that you can go through. So enjoy and have a good night, good evening or good morning, wherever, wherever you are. Thank you from my part. Thank Shreya. you, everybody. Have a nice Thank day. You. See you. Bye.